Was there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Hmm. Nobody seems to be here. Additions or Boy, that agenda is like bottomless. <sighs> oh, I could have put more on. So I was wondering if you, you did read it, it's like the I scrolls, <laughs> the scrolls of Denise, you unfurl them. Yes. Hear ye, hear ye, now come the agenda. Right, and it's like, is that it? Is that, like, do I remember everything we had to do? <laughs> okay, Mr. Road Commissioner, how is the road oh, hey. doing? With all the mud, I mean, some of these places, I know you guys have fixed three and four yeah. times at least, maybe more. Yeah. Like the well, Moscow now Woods. we're into clay, clay boils. And so by the gray barn, I see you fixed that again. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's the shaded spots. It's the spots where That's the dishes are enough. full. Well, there's got to be either clay under there or there's... Or else where the springs are just coming on the hillsides. There's tons of water there. Yeah. Right in yeah. front of my house, man, it's a swamp. I was gonna hit with the grader blade, I just didn't have a chance. So, everybody's tired, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're into new territory now. It's not plowing and sanding, so. Right, right, well, at least uh, it's different. The guys are excited about that, maybe. I bet. Something different, yeah. Did you take the plows off yet? The plows are not on the trucks. But they're not put away yet. <laughs> Just in case. You can back blade with them. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not unheard of to get more snow. Yeah, that's true. End of, end of April, first of May. So. Oh, don't even say mm -hmm. that. I know. I know. I would rather it didn't, but right. if it happens, we have to be ready. Right. So, you want to tell us about the broken frame? Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot more information, but it's, uh, it is broken. And they have, they first throw me, threw me an estimate. Okay, tell us who they is. They is Formula Ford. Uh-huh. It is not covered under warranty. It is, they quoted me $14,000. To fix it? To, for, for a new frame, for a brand new frame. That does not, I just found out today, that does not include taking off the plow frames, the wing tower, the body. They want the back body taken off, uh, which Jeez. would be, because they don't have the equipment to lift it and the know how, whatever. So that would 14 be, grand, it's not, nothing to that. It's a tubular I know. piece of iron, what a rip off. Is it one piece all the way through to the engines? Yeah. So they have to pull the engine. Does that include yeah, all that? It, it, yeah, they have to pull the engine. That can, pull that's the included in pull. the fourteen grand. The engine pull. Well, I understand the frame. that they're gonna they would change the frame out. How they do it, whatever I don't know, but that's what they've quoted me so far. But there's a, num a bunch of work that you would have to do at the shop before. Taking or it take it to Fairfield, who put the truck together. HB Fairfield is the ones that put that build our trucks, put uh -huh. the yeah, and yeah. The flies and all that stuff on. And so that's I haven't got that price yet, so I, I'm just guessing. I'm wondering what the frame itself would cost if we had someone else do it, like Fairfield or some mechanic shop. Like, well, uh, the problem is that it's you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. I mean, so I would want somebody that definitely knows Ford and knows. Yeah, you know, right, right. I'm not completely done with that. I'm still researching the possibility of fixing the frame. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's welders out there that can put metal together and make it whole. That would be better. So well, we it would certainly be cheaper. But you, yeah. when we were chatting over on the road when we were fixing it, I thought that... Um, right, Formula Ford, this, the sale, uh, the service guy at Formula Ford called the DOT officer and said, is this legal? Can a frame be welded on a vehicle? And he said that they leave it up to the manufacturer. Problem. Manufacturer being Ford Motor Company, right? Is Ford <laughs> Motor Company? 14,000 <laughs> or nothing. Are they going to, I mean, Ford Motor Company, are they going to allow you to weld the frame or are they going to say, no, we, we want to sell you the one? Right. So there you go, you're, you're stuck with that. But right. who's, what's the value who's of Who's to say? I mean, so so we could weld it. You're not going to get like a certificate from Ford or what if you had it, if they say they did approve the weld. Right. The problem is inspection. They won't DOT. will they pass inspection with a welded frame. Vermont State Inspection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, that's that's what I don't know. Where, where is it broken? It's right uh, on the cab the front, uh, the front left frame rail. It's right, it's right on that curve. On the curve. On the front tire. So, and I haven't seen it. It's been. I sent it down there for a turbo issue and a leaky transmission pan. And it came. And it came so back. So they this came issue. back. They came. They <laughs> called me and said, "Look, we found the frame was broke, and mm -hmm. what do you want to do?" Is it rotted or just fatigue from that style? Just fatigue. It's just. So what's the value of the truck? The, in its current condition, and what's the value of it if you get it fixed? You know? Um. That I would have to do some research. I mean, it's it's certainly a lot less with a broken frame. Right. And there's only you know who's going to buy it. I'm assuming a farmer or somebody that's, right. that's in estimating somebody that you know doesn't care as much. You know what I mean? As much right. as. I mean, this uh, is the truck that carries the stuff for the county road, the salt and that right, liquid stuff. Little, and yeah, the little one time we use it a lot in the summertime as well. For it pulls the chloride trailer, it pulls the rake. Mm -hmm. You know, any little hand tool stuff that we do, little cleaning collars, that's the truck that goes. Um, so you can't really, even if you got this, this other turbo stuff fixed, you couldn't really well, that's run the one. truck with the broken frame, right? I, I'm not certain of that. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I thought maybe if we did it light duty, didn't have the plow, didn't have the wing, just, you know. Do you know if it cracked on a weld? Or it cracked like uh, again. I haven't seen it, so I, mean, I well crack. So. You could weld that, right? You know, that should be my opinion. It can be welded. Yeah, I, I've, I'm I've sure done it can. a lot of welding myself. You could make it better than new. Right. You could double it up and be right. ten you times plate better. it. You could weld plates on it. Yeah, in many ways. The issue is is state inspection. Will right. it will it pass state inspection? Being that it's a welded frame. And, that's, they, and, that's the question. and they and they're going to look at that if they know that there was an issue. Certainly, if it goes back to Ford for right. for the right. sticker, and they're well, you don't go to Ford for the sticker. You go anywhere else, somewhere else. I just want to know what year is this truck? It is a 2015. It's been in service for four years. And do we buy it new? Yeah, we bought it brand new. Yeah. And it's not warranty, just like everything else. The frame is not. That's right. <laughs> Course. The turbo is. The turbo is. is it's not uh, great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so am I re remembering correctly that we pay for trucks for five years, mm -hmm. and then we hope to get two more years out of them? Most trucks. Keep in mind, this is a this is a one time. This is okay. this is it's a it's a lighter duty truck. It's right. a five fifty, right? It's not five fifty. So it should go more or it should go less. It should go less. Okay. Should sure. be in service. It should that should be a five year truck. I mean it'd be great if we could get like another year out of it. That we do and then, you know. But that makes the question what are we gonna what are what are the payments for the final year? I don't know. Fourteen thousand that we guess and that's probably pretty off by now. Lo and behold, it's a problem with yeah. Fords. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're not saying you're still on this. We have had pretty good luck. Over the years, we've always had Fords for that particular route. The mm -hmm. other one cracked too. Do you remember? The uh, other rusted out. Ah, uh, rusted out. Yeah. I'm looking at a frame crack. It looks like that's in the back. So I, I am planning on doing more research on the whole welding, the fixing of it. Right. Uh, but I wanted to make you guys aware and kind of get your sense of how you wanted to proceed. I mean, I think that we can probably get away with running it for the summer mm -hmm. on light duty, just being careful, not putting heavy loads on it, and... That's it, that, that's without fixing it? Without fixing the frame. When's the inspection due? Uh, I think, I just got it done this spring, so... I oh, okay, so we got, got like a... Most of a year, yes. It's, yeah. what, what are the safety issues, though? If it's not, if it's not gonna pass state, state inspection, that's because the state thinks it's not safe. Right. And if we know about the problem and there's potential it's not safe, right. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sign up, line up well with me. So what do you what do you think, Alfie, about safety? <coughs> well, it certainly opens us up to liability. Right. If something happens because the frame is broken, somebody gets injured. Right. Or something happens, you know. And we knew about it. And we knew about it. <laughs> 
that's not good. I mean, the killer is that it's 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 a year from I know. the trade. Mm -hmm. So a uh, similar situation that we were in with the 2012. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. and, I, and I I can get more numbers um, for a cabin chassis and how much it would cost to take the equipment off of this truck and put it mm -hmm. onto a new cabin chassis. I mean, yeah. There's a lot more research that I can do and willing to do, but I just wanted to yeah. have that time, first of all, and second of all, right. I just wanted to let you guys know. Mm -hmm. No, I think the couple of options that you mentioned, I think, are worth some research, and then we can figure out where to go from there. Right. So I can put this on the agenda again on, um, what are we going to be on, May 13th? So the other issue that I just learned this afternoon before I left work was that the turbo is on back order. And they have no idea of when... when so is it pushing oil to the turbo? It's squealing. It's like whistling. And there's no power. So the truck doesn't have any power. Yeah. You know, if that fractures, it can get in the intake and wreck the motor. Yeah. That's so. why I got it down there as soon as I could, could so I didn't, you know, to create more damage. So how, how does this affect the workload? Not having this truck right now. Uh, right now, it affects a lot because, like I said, we pull the chloride trailer with it, mm -hmm. we pull the rake with it. Uh, any, you know, the hand work stuff we can use to pick up. That's not the issue. Right. But it's more the rake and the and the chloride. Can you pull the rake and the chloride with anything else? Uh, we can do it with the six wheeler, but that's it's, there. It's over two. No, that's the that's the, it's a fleet truck. It's one of the oh, fleet okay. trucks. Yeah. But it's a six wheeler, so it's a little bit shorter, or smaller than the ten wheelers. Right, right. Um, I mean, can we get by? Of course, we'll make it happen. Whatever we got to do. Right. But certainly, this truck being down is going to affect you know, affect how we do. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure it could be my bad memory, but I'm pretty sure we discussed uh, as part of that last truck blow up. Um, I think we kind of meandered into a discussion about the 550 and Fords and my complaints about those trucks having owned one. Um, and was it you that mentioned there's a, a brand, I don't know what it is, what's the brand of the truck we use now for the... Uh, Western Star. Does Western Star make like a, a mini? Not a mini. Well, no. But somebody about makes a mini liner. truck. People, you, uh, you mentioned maybe it was Freightliner. Freightliner makes a low pro. Low pro. Uh, yeah. um, I hear that that International is now making a low pro. It's somewhere between the six wheeler size and the one ton size. Um, Chevy is also making one that is, you know, in that. What's the cost of a new one, roughly? Uh, Fifty to sixty thousand for the cabin chassis, and then whatever it would cost to walk out the equipment unless we decided to buy new equipment, mm -hmm. which would be what I would recommend just because after four years of service, mm -hmm. the plow is, it's all loose, it's all loose jointed, mm -hmm. it's, it's rusting, it's... Yeah. Well, I think we should keep that in mind when you're getting information about how much it's going to cost to fix this truck and how long might it really last, you know, if it's only going to be used for another year. Get rid of it. You know, right. do we just get rid of it? Rid of it on that because we can we're, fix it. That's what I'm thinking. Realistically, we're probably going to have twenty thousand dollars into this repair. Right. If it's fourteen, just to change out the frame, mm -hmm. it's going to be easily another six to swap the equipment. Right. But if we get it fixed and then trade it towards, you would get some trade for it, yes, as long as you don't tell them the frame's been. Right, but they can have. They can They'll look at it. They can yeah. look at it and tell. I may not. Right. Really? If you do, if you do a grind it and do a close weld there, you could. Yeah, I don't think you want to not be honest about it though. Yeah, right. yeah I don't want I that on my conscience. I mean, I would, exactly. I would right. feel better about just telling the person that mm -hmm. yeah. this is yeah. it. You buy it on your own risk. Right. All right, so stay tuned, I guess, huh? I will dig more information, okay. particularly about the, the safetyness of a weld. I know that can be welded. I know there are certified welders that can weld yeah. and make it better than new. Mm -hmm. Right. 
but it's just a matter of can a welded frame go through? Well, well there's a sort of alternative certification process. Right. And that's um, something that maybe. I mean, they may. You speak to one person at AOT who picks up the phone. Sure. Of course, Ford would be one, but there may be other right. alternatives. Yeah. So okay. there's some more work to do. And Sandra I, I wanted to, to say it, something. Just... What, Sandra? We do okay. have one more payment next year. One more? FY20. Oh, okay. It's one. almost $17,000. Oh. So that was a five-year loan. <clears throat> okay. At 2.75. Maybe we default, let Ford take it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so but they're broken frames. And lawyer fees then. So I will pursue looking into a fix. Okay. Well yeah, I mean, you know, then you can come back and let us know what the options are and what you recommend. Yeah. 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 I mean, the turbo. Like I said, as soon as the turbo's in, I would, I will run it on light duty, and and just see, you know, at least to get us through the mud season, get the roads graded mm -hmm. up, shaped up. Yeah. And then we've got some time. But I will, I will dig in with some more research and keep okay. you guys informed. All right, great. Now, road damage. There's been plenty of it, but not like massive, right? I mean, you got Yeah, this. not really. I mean, we've had a couple of culverts that have crushed uh, due to frost or heavy trucks or whatever they want. I don't know how to blame it, but I mm -hmm. think it's a lot to do with the culverts that we were using. Ten years ago, yeah, um, and they just they crushed, and most of the time they crushed right at the joint where the two culverts come together. Mm -hmm. uh, so that seems point. to be the weak point. Yeah, and so normally you can get away with putting a couple sandbags in it and then fill mm -hmm. the sinkhole with gravel. Uh, I got a day out of the one on Martin Road. I got one day out of that fix, and it and it blew right out, and mm -hmm. you know another sinkhole. Mm -hmm. So now is that road closed too? Nothing's closed at this point. There Blitz, was Blitz Pond is open. Yes. Yeah. You, you got it all done. That uh, was all done like at two thirty. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, what about Sadie Foss and Marshfield? What's going on? That is Marshfield's deal. Mm -hmm. I haven't been there. Oh. Uh -huh. That's yeah, not our problem. Uh -huh. They just asked if we could, if they could close our portion of the road. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, Oh, they great. made it sound like they were going to wait for, for the frost to come out before they changed it. Oh, really? Okay. Which to me is ludicrous. I think it's out. <laughs> it's out. Dig it. Right. And an excavator will go through that frost. I hit yeah. a foot of frost today and I peeled it right up and yeah. got my culvert in. So why they're waiting, I don't know. I didn't quiz them too much. I just. Right, that's you know, their deal. That's their deal. Um, but Unless we get a. I mean, how much traffic does that affect for. You know, not much. Not I mean, much. Because okay. they can go, they can go further down East Hill and then take uh -huh. Marshfield Road over and get them to the same spot. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit further away if they're going to Plainfield, say, but uh -huh. depending on where they're going, but it's not a huge. And our portion, you know, as far as our residents that uh -huh. live on that road, they are not affected. They can. Right. The, the road says closed, but they can drive around it. They right. can go around the barricade and get to their home. Okay. Do we have any estimate on the cost of all the damage that we've had? Is this, and, and is this the stuff, because um, I had a, email, a call from CDRPC, was it Saturday, maybe Saturday morning, I think it was, about the road damage, and Toby said that he reported it. And so is this going to the pot of whether or not FEMA money is available? Um, that's a tough question, because I don't, I mean, a lot of it is just spring time mm -hmm. wear and tear on our culverts and on the roads. So right. I'm not sure what their criteria would be. Yeah. I mean, we did receive a lot of rain and a lot of fast melting. Mm -hmm. And is that an act of nature? Of course it is. But I don't know. I don't. I don't see that we had a lot of damage caused by the storm. By the storms. I think it's just the way the weather is, and mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, Toby and I are keeping track of what 
and then we're putting in right money in. If, the, if it does look like right that's what I just want to be we're sure really close for a fee the FEMA amount because you have to be a certain amount of right damage. and sometimes and even right. just a little bit here and there makes it so that it's up to the amount that they can report to get reimbursement from FEMA right. so right yeah so we are keeping track of that for, okay for a particular problems that we have had out there okay but, it's supposed to rain off and on all week. I'm going to try to raid where I can in between, and we still got mud holes. Today I couldn't. I got a few mud holes fixed, um, but I was on the excavator all day, and mm -hmm. I actually had Ed come in so that once my two trucks were free from the culvert, I sent them hauling gravel for for the mud spots. Yeah. But tomorrow we should be able to get a better handle on them. The actual mud spots. Yeah. And I'm, I've got some people calling me about potholes, and I'm sorry, I can't fix potholes right now. <laughs> yeah, I let's just fix can't. The mud I mean, let's fix the mud holes first. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, well, wow, this week it was, I had to get my culverts done. There was two mm -hmm. culverts, one road that I probably should have closed. Mm -hmm. This pond it should have been closed over the weekend. I thought Joey said it was, but. No, we, we announced that it was going to be closed today for the okay, repair. Okay, that's what it was. Just for the repair. I mean, Joanne didn't think she was going to get through it. Last night she didn't know. I think yeah. she was right tell her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it wasn't unsafe. It was just there was water running across the road and right. Uh, yeah. You know what they tell us about driving the water right. across the road. Across, right, because you don't know what's underneath. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it wasn't a huge river, so mm -hmm. that's why I decided to leave it open and yeah. deal with it today. So it looks like a deluge on Wednesday again. Tuesday's supposed yeah. to be good. Thursday's good. So, anything else? Saturday. 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 Before you go off the road, I have something I'd like to say. Okay. I just sent you select board members an email with a couple of pictures. Um, what I'm complaining about is not you, Alfred, not the road. I'm complaining about the fact that our nice neighbor is back, Elizabeth Shedd, and her car is parked yes. in the road. And um, the side, I just came through. Uh, tonight on the way home. And I've got an SUV, nice clearance. And I went zero miles an hour and I still hit bottom because of the mud hole beside her car. Where was this? Below our house. Collar Hill. Collar Hill. Collar Hill. Yeah. Now I'm asking you as select board members to have her remove the car from the road. It's against the law. It has been there for three days. I didn't even know she was back. Well, she is, and one horse is back, so get ready for what? that. What? Uh, this is road stuff. We'll go to that later. You may. I'm going home. <laughs> there's pictures of the, the, there's pictures of, of before the car and well, after the car to show you how I'm much hard that. surface there is that people could be driving on uh -huh. if her car was not there. The license plate number is you got it for the minute. Six two seven three one. And I put that as the subject of your email. I didn't get one. It, may, it takes forever my pic, for my picture emails to go anywhere. Okay. Sometimes I send things to people six times because I think they didn't go. <laughs> so they get sick of it. So I And this is 62731? 62731, Vermont. Oh, there's no It's a letter. small silver the uh, Subaru. So where does she normally park? Same she place. has a place, actually, she could pull straight off the road, mm -hmm. or even now, if she would pull well past the mud hole, people could get around the mud hole. Mm -hmm. But for so her me, car is to be clear. Well, and, I, and believe me, I understand how Alfred must be working, because from my house to here, it took me 20 minutes tonight because of the places, but I could go around a lot of them. Mm -hmm. This one, you can't. Because her car is in the way. Her car is in the way and on the good part of the road, uh, of and it is sucking okay. mud on the other side. So I don't know yeah. why if you can't force parked, her to move the car. If her car is parked on one side, all the traffic is going mm -hmm. to yeah. right. one spot. So right. you follow one route, one. It makes it worse. Route. It makes it worse. Right. Right. And and the car, it actually that part of the road is pretty dry. That side of the road, her side of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of good place to park. Right? So I came, I, I we just got home here, we went downtown to do stuff, and you don't need to know this, but we did stop and eat dinner, and I'm getting home thinking, oh, I've already had dinner, and I'm going, 
I just have to go to that select board meeting and tell them about it. It was the car that bugged me, mm -hmm. and you can't do anything if you don't know about it. Right, right. Thank so, you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I left a message for Alfred on his phone at the garage. He probably got it. That is. And um, so he knows too. But I think an effort mm -hmm. needs to be made to make sure she doesn't park the car, even in the summertime or whatever. She's always parking in the road. And it's, it's, true. There, it's a pain a in the neck. Not allowed to park in the travel right. ways. Right, she certainly shoulder. is, but she, as you know, doesn't pay attention to anything. Mm -hmm. I so, just she's feel so she's parked on the travel portion of the road? Oh, not, definitely. Not, okay. Well, you might, when the picture gets to you, yeah, you'll, you'll see. see. Okay, all right. I can show it to you on here if you want. No, it's okay, I'll see it when I get home. That's fine. Um, if you get it. I now. just <laughs> suddenly yeah, felt yeah. good when I saw the picture over there, because I'm forgetting to ask, What's going to happen to the chandelier in the in the town hall? And I see it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's going to still be there. We Good. sold it. I, <laughs> I don't need. Be, I have two sons and a husband like that. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even get her going. <laughs> Doesn't work. No, need that. Uh, she's got the number. Thanks for listening. All right. Thanks, Thank Don. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you much. Nice travel. I hope you make it home. I will. <laughs> all right, thanks, Don. Yeah, yeah, you better make it all by home. Don't yeah. stop. Yeah. Scratching the car. Okay, um, are we done with roads? I just had a comment about street signs when you start ordering them again. Okay. L I G H T E N I N G R I D G E R O A D. Spell yeah, but it's gone, right? It's, it's gone again a, a dozen times. Yeah, no, but it's gone. Did you know it's gone? Yes, that's on order. This oh, is like oh. the fourth time. Oh, yeah, and the stop sign's gone, right. too. That happened today, I think. Really? Yeah, no, it's been gone. The stop sign? Yeah. At the top of Lightning Ridge. I okay. know somebody over that's gone. Okay, I noticed it today. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Thanks, uh, yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah, the, the Lightning Ridge Road has been gone for a while. Yeah, only a couple weeks. Right. So oh. it's on order. I so are they, they unbolting it? How are they getting it? They know. must stand on their tailgate and just rip it. I mean, they, they go back and forth. And <laughs> so we put like a little tile. You know those little tiles? And yeah, the find tracking things. tiles. Yeah, can yeah. We, let's put a tracking tile on them. Chip it. Oh, yeah, they're little. It's crazy. We've replaced it a hundred times. I don't know why. Well, they're if like I wouldn't see it in the dark, because they're probably stealing them in the dark. So can we, like, weld, like, something around it? It's a little bit. No, put a, a bracket, like, oh, I don't know. Okay, well, artists, razor wire. The post out of the ground then. <laughs> razor wire. But at least they have, but at least that Which would have to be. Which is the most expensive part. Cement right into a big block of right. concrete. Well, I think it's time for, a, for like, a game camera. Camera. Set up a yeah. camera. And then maybe we can get a license yeah. plate, or we can find that, and I'll at least see what kind of vehicle it is. What is with idea. that sign? What are they doing with anybody it? would want a sign that says Lightning Ridge. I don't get it. But four, but know. four or five times. Maybe because it's so long. Maybe they're welding their frame and their truck. With <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is good thick aluminum. I'll give you that. It's, it's, I don't understand great why somebody keeps stealing it. It's I like, know. don't you have enough of these signs in your basement already? Yeah. Yeah. I see up by Andy Felice's house, somebody put up a sign that says Interstate 89. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to chuck a lot of that well, on the way They stole a sign and stuck it there? It's an old sign. It's an old sign. It's not one of the new ones. But I thought it was pretty funny because it's right near a place where there's mud. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the tiles are four of them for $60. But then you have to track it. I, I think that might not be. I've never heard of these. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I've heard of them and you haven't done That's unusual. Yeah. You're not a techie, do you? I know. I'm a oh. secret techie. So, They're waterproof. You can. I don't know, but you put it like on your keys. It, it works. I think it works the same way as the thing that finds your phone, uh -huh. which is in the phone. The reason I know about Our it is because we, we had one for one of my people that used to escape all the time. He had one in his pocket or something. No, we put it on. Our, we put it in a purse. <laughs> so she looked like a purse. Oh, awesome. You found her with it. I think a game camera is a good idea. Yeah. Game camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those you can program right to a cell phone. And you can right. Look at your pictures from it. How much is it? If you get service. Two or three hundred? Yeah, no service. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something we should invest in for other. Well, I mean, look, we just talked about how many signs. Steal the game. I, um, I wonder if there's you know. any. How, how many are the signs? I want to check with, make sure it's, we're going to be doing anything illegal by doing this. 
What? Taking pictures of these? I wonder if we just put up a sign that says surveillance camera in operation. Mm -hmm. They'll go look for it. Right. They'll steal that. The only thing I worry about <laughs> in, in terms right. of illegal they would they is would steal, they would steal that camera you'd camera be putting the camera on private property. But there's no expectation of privacy out in the middle of the road. Well, you could, I mean, we would give you permission, but our. Our trees, they are kind of open, mm -hmm. so you probably could see the camera. Yeah, but no one's, if yeah, if no they, one's looking it would for have it. to be. So we can uh, put it on your land, you'd be okay with that? Sure. Get to count the deer and the beer. And Rose has every right to put a camera up on her. That's a crazy intersection between people going off the road and flipping trucks and that. What's going on down there? Is that like a, is that party zone? I don't know about this. Is that the party zone? Is there a, like a place on your property that people go to party? No, we're all old now. <laughs> Oh, but are the kids going there? You can't party. Something's going on. Yeah. Around. Exactly. That's right. All right, so we're off track here. Um, but yeah, we should, should look about getting a game camera. And you know, if Rose is giving us permission. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't bother me. So I mean, Rose I, is going to buy a game camera? With, uh, actually, I had one, but I lent it to my daughter and never saw it again. Okay, that's kids for you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Annual financial, town, annual financial plan for town and highways. We have this before us to sign this. We do this every year. Um, these are major projects that we're looking at for this season are um, Town Highway 4 Marshfield Road, that's a better back roads. Town Highway 4 Marshfield Roads, another better back roads. Ditching and drainage. Moscow Woods. Class two road ramp re to resurface it. That's the paved part, right? Paving, yeah. And George Road replace a 60 by 40 foot pipe with a new structure. Does that mean culvert? Yeah. Okay. We're working on it with the engineer with what type of structure right now. Right now. It's looking like it probably would be another aluminum box that we've been putting. Oh, okay. So this is for fiscal year 2020, beginning July 1, 19, ending June 30, 2020. Would anybody like a motion to make a motion to approve this and we should all sign it? Yes. Second. I'll second. Any further discussion or questions? No. Anything you want to add, Alfred? No, I mean, we, we met with Shauna Clifford and that's how we come up with the projects. The projects. She's pretty much guaranteeing us the grant for the payment because it's been three years or so since we've applied for, right. for our class two grant. So she's pretty much given us the green light on that. Yeah. So we'll certainly get the grant. Okay. Sounds good. 22nd. 22nd. We do We need to vote. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Go ahead, John. I gotta go to the dentist tomorrow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't eat candy, you'll want to do it day, now. <laughs> I, uh, All right. Quick question. Are you planning on doing the crack seal on the county road this summer? Yes. Yes, that will happen. Okay. Um, roadside mowing. Last year, we didn't get on Doug Grapp's radar mm -hmm. until too far into the season. I want to make sure that we get on his radar soon enough this season oh, yeah, so right. we can figure out when we want to do the roadside mowing. Same plan as last year, right? Right, but I'd have, I have to go back and look and see when ideally we would like him to do it so we can get on his radar sooner rather than later. Yeah. Do you remember? Uh, it was before July, it was like July 1st, I believe, when it started. Right, and I think we i got to go back and look at the minutes, because ideally we, we would do it before, and I forget which invasive, mm -hmm. which invasive comes first. Right. But we got two, we got two budgeted. Two months. Two, two months budgeted. Trick or treat? Trick or treat. So it's a little bit difficult to say when exactly we want to do it, because the invasives come in a different Right. Every year, right? So it's a sort of grab a window of his time. Yeah. And I hope that it's. Yeah, I just want to put it on our radar that we want to ask about it with him right. and get it scheduled sooner rather than later. But 
I guess if we can go back and look at the minutes and maybe get a rough idea of when we would ideally like him to do it. Yeah. And then last year they did that experimental thing on that road, I forget what the name of it is, over by West Old West Church, Kilrins. Mm -hmm. And remember Peter Harvey had put up those signs mm -hmm. and he was charged with contacting all the neighbors and that didn't necessarily happen and then I got phone calls. Yeah, so was it, was it the Killerins? Yes. No mode zone. Yeah. <clears throat> From the Killerins because of the burdocks and so I know that will come up again. Yeah. So I just want to put this out on everybody's radar. <coughs> I, um, in terms of the invasives, maybe we can ask Alfie to consult with Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she'll be back mid-May. So, so we, can, we can certainly get the Conservation Commission involved in... In choosing the timing. Like right. We can, that this is a perfect place to consult their expertise. We, we know that it's, you know, you may not hit the exact mm -hmm. optimal day, but they can give Alfie the right window. Yeah. And then we can just let them let them decide. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask the conservation commission to put this yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think timing mm -hmm. is is the essence because you want to get on mm -hmm. those dogs' agenda. Right. Exactly. That's my point. And, and the time. So if we can nail that that window of time down soon or mm -hmm. later, then we could we can get on his on his list. Right. right. And that's why I wanted to bring it up now so that we have mm -hmm. plenty of time. All right, I'll contact the Conservation Commission um, and they can put it on their upcoming agenda. All right, so. Is there, any, is there any value in giving Doug a heads up or only when you know exactly when you want it done? No point in calling him until you know. Um, I mean, I can tell him that we're going to hire him so he knows that he's, mm -hmm. he's going to be hired by us and then he can. You know, right, and we can just tell them we'll let them know the exact date that we want done. Yeah, or the window. So that's hard for him to, to do. Mm -hmm. I just say if we, can put it on his, if we can put it on his radar that we're going to, you know, be looking at this sooner rather than later so we don't give him last minute requests like we did last year. Right. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that he doesn't know we're going to hire him right now because mm -hmm. there's been years in the past that we put it out to bid. Right, and, and we always offered get it to others. He's always been the winning bidder, blah, right. blah, blah, but that doesn't guarantee him every year. No, so it doesn't. If, we, if you want me to commit to that, then he mm -hmm. would probably feel better about setting that week aside. How does, just the board, do that for us. how does the board feel about us just saying yeah. we're going to go with Doug because he knows the yeah. talent? He's always, always done this. it. Yeah. What's the total? I'm good with that. That's to be 10,000. The whole town, 5,000 per time. He does yeah. it twice. He does it twice. Yeah. It's, a great, I'm, it's I'm, a great deal. I'm, I am fine with that, but I'm, I, I, when the phone call comes from Alfred to Doug, I think we should also relay, it's really important to us that we're able to time the cuts mm -hmm. optimally for invasives. Mm -hmm. So we're going to forego the, the bidding the bidding process, Doug, because we want to work with you, but we ask that you, you know, the Conservation Commission is working on giving us a, a date, and I'll have that by with tell me by the end of May. But then we need you to commit and do work on the invasive yeah. schedule. So I'll, I'll tell him that you've got the contract if you give us the dates we want. Right, basically. You can show us. The, that week of time mm -hmm. that we want you to mow. And yeah. he, he actually said he'd do that. Yeah, I mean, last, he, year. last year he said yeah, he it's very really easy to get along. Yeah, he's not, great. Yeah, he's not I don't you know, know, hard to do all of that off. No, I mean, he was, you know, he really felt bad guy. last like year. He tried to squeeze Deb's us in. Husband, right? yeah. I'm sorry, what? Doug Grab's husband. Yeah. You know, he tried to squeeze us in as best he could. Oh. Make sure. Whoops. Okay. Um, all right, and then the other thing is the curb cut application. Did you see it? Uh, yes. Oh, I think I might have, did you send it to me? I think I sent it to you electronically. 
I, think I opened it. It, it was upside down. upside down. I know because it, the way my. Oh, that's right. And I didn't. Yeah, there it is. You can t you can turn it. I. I you can turn it. We all know it. Um, I have to do this to get it turned. Hang on. Really? My, mine, when I call it up, I can just spin it through the little arrow. Yeah. It, on mine, Google wants to give me a whole assortment of programs to open it with. Do you want to do this tonight, folks, or do you want to do it next meeting? Has Alfie seen it? I don't think there's any rush. I think there's any rush. The I think it's up there. All right, on. well, let's do it next time, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows about it. So let's just get a copy for Alfred. Is, and part of the reason I didn't go look at it today or the other day is it because it's on the Sadie Foss Road. I thought and it was all closed. Mud. And I thought it was closed. All right. Come on. Or is it Max Gray? <clears throat> it, I, what I read is it's on Max Gray, X number of feet from Sadie Foss. To be Foss. the term property address, Max Gray. Mm -hmm. 300 feet from the intersection of the same cost. Yeah. So, Katie, if you could put that down. <laughs> that would yeah. Be on both routes. And, yeah, keep going down. Let's look at the map. And yes. we need to put a yeah. number on it. I don't know where I get the number. Melinda, Chris and Melinda yes. Neff? Judy. From Roxbury? Does yeah. somebody sell a lot up there? <laughs> yes, Doug Burroughs. Doug Burroughs sold his house. Would you? Uh, Doug sold his house, so that's. So now, nice, is, he, so is he still living in town? Yeah, Doug he is? moved to his original house. Okay. Uh, All right, so we'll do this I'll, next I'll have time. I'll look at that because that's sort of puzzling where that is. Yeah. There is a lot between Doug Grout's old house and the cemetery. Yeah. Oh, Maybe that's it. It's a okay. nice feel. Yeah. That's what I feel. Okay, so put this on your radar for next time. Next yeah, slide. I'll have a look at it for sure. Thank you. All right, is there anything else for Alfred so we can get Sandra on? Thanks, Alfred. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I'll be here for yours, or you could. Do you want? We could do highway first. Okay. The highway budget. Sure. Okay. So there is a treasurer's report. Um, sitting in the middle, there's a copy for everyone. And if oh, there's we, two left, so who didn't get it besides me? John. Oh, John. John. Oh. Yeah. So if you go to the second page of that package, um, I have summarized the oh the highway the the budget and expense reports from Nimric, and the last time we met. I said that I was about the um, work of inputting or programming the grants and the grant revenue right into the highway budget and revenue fields so that they will net out one another and we will know instantly when we're ready to close the year what goes into the highway capital fund. So as far as the highway revenues are concerned, we are over budget in terms of the revenues, primarily due to grant revenues. All right. Okay. Now, for the expense side, we are close to budget, primarily due to grant expenses and uh, also to the weather that we had this year. We are really close sure. in wages. We are at about at about max in wages now. So I would- For the entire year. For the entire year. So it, it's very likely, it's almost, it's, it's a virtual certainty that the budget, that the highway expenses will exceed the budget due to weather conditions. There are two more months of salaries, benefits, payroll taxes, utilities, equipment maintenance, and grant expenses. Mm -hmm. And I can't really project the expenses because they're, they're so largely weather dependent and equipment, as we sit, talked about it, tonight, right. equipment right. maintenance driven. The takeaway from this is that um, because at, at this point in time, today, 
the highway has a $184,000 plus to make it through the end of FY19. And that includes salaries, any expenses, includes that, everything. Right? That includes everything. So if you take the highway budget, which includes budgeted expenses and non-budgeted expenses, which are your grant expenses, and you uh, look at the highway revenues, which were budgeted, and grant revenues, which are not budgeted. You would subtract the expenses from the revenues, and what you get is this $184,000. Now, this $184,000 hopefully will take us through to the end of the year plus. Mm -hmm. And then anything left over goes into the... Rolls right over into the highway capital equipment. A, a fund mm -hmm. and at this point in time that fund has in it highway fund, I don't like that. fund has eighty thousand eight hundred dollars in it currently. and that is before or after we take out a payment for the new well, that is what is in it right now. Next year, we will, uh, FY20, we will have a payment of roughly $40,000 that will come out of that fund. Okay, so what about the lease payment for the, the truck that we just got? When does that, do you have we paid a lease payment? Yes, yet? we have. We have, okay, so we another payment will come out next fiscal year. In next January. So okay. in fiscal year 20, there will be another payment in okay. January. And so, those payments are like 70000 uh, about 40000 So that's where we are, and uh, that is reflected in um, I, what I did was break out the highway fund expenses and revenue so you can see how mm -hmm. uh, revenues and, and expenses net out to give us this number. And we just finished this programming. The accountants, by the way, were ecstatic that we did it that way. Okay. Um, yeah. Any comment on that, Alfred? Uh, no, that's, that's, Is that music, what you, I can, that's music to my ears. Uh, yes, yeah, so what I can do now is, on a monthly basis, I can send, generate this report to Highway, and that will give them a good feel for where they are. Where they are, right, yeah. right, that's good. Thing. So as we're thinking about this truck, I think it's, it's, uh, nice to know at this point or mm -hmm. comforting shall we say that we're you know we're going to be able to manage uh, whatever repair or replacement we need to do for that particular truck so general government is not quite as happy and we'll talk about that now um, <laughs> The, 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 I'm leaving. <laughs> I knew it. How do I know that? <laughs> so, thank you. so the, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Alfred. Nice right. work. Tell the guys we appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. So thanks, the big, Alfred. the big takeaway from this is that but I don't see the, I don't see the what new Western Star payment as being paid on here, what am I missing? It's because okay. it's not, it was not budgeted. The budget strategy that the highway and the select board adopted for FY20 was to take that FY19. payment from the, FY20, was to take that payment out of the capital equipment fund. And they also determined that that payment would come out of the capital equipment fund for FY19. That's how we right, were Right, that's able. what I was saying, that's, I don't see it listed here. It wouldn't be there in your budget because it didn't, it wasn't a budgeted expense. It came out of your fund balance. But where do you, where does it show on here? It, it, it doesn't show on there. Where it would show is if I ran a full report on the highway fund balance. So that is a fund. Let's see if it so basically, we took it out of savings, not out of checking. Yeah. And we're looking at checking. Exactly. Right. Uh, we should, we should so see. here we are. So this, let's see if it shows it. So this page right here 
is the Highway Equipment Fund, and it starts out at roughly $80,824. Um, there we opened the year with 34000 in it. We um, added another 46. It doesn't show the subtraction, but the subtraction is tucked in there. Well, I, I believe you. I'm just trying to understand why we can't see it. Because it wasn't out of the budget. Because the reports you have are budgeted expense reports, and this particular expense wasn't paid out of a budget line. We didn't have a budget line for it. it it's was a slush paid, fund. It was paid out of the holiday um, highway equipment fund capital account, which is not an expense account, mm -hmm. it's a rollover account. So it wouldn't show in a, in a budget line item. And in fact, if you remember the FY20 budget that you created, doesn't have that payment in it either. You mean in the... Um for your proposed FY20 budget, that payment does, is not there. That payment is was in was agreed to be made out of the mm -hmm. capital equipment fund. So when they sold their truck and bought the new one, those truck proceeds went in to that fund directly, and then we also paid out of that fund the lease payment. Is that what that forty six thousand you said went in? That yes. Probably is what we got yeah, for the old five. Yes. Yeah, okay, I was wondering where that came from. That makes sense. Yeah. So I can I mean when I'm done, I can run you a full report on that if you would like to see it. But that's but that is not a budgeted it was reflected in the budget that it wasn't part of the budget, but it's coming from another source. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure that we can see it somehow. Um, so I guess at the beginning of FY20, it would be good to see that capital equipment fund with the expenses and the money that's put in. Can you do? Can you do that? Yeah, you can. I can. Okay, I, can. I just want to be transparent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing you might think about, and I didn't want to hold Alfred up any longer, is if there is a considerable amount of money to be rolled over, that is because there was an article voted on at town meetings uh, several years ago mm -hmm. that requires that, but you might want to consider, uh, along with highway, to say only 50% of the highway fund balance at the end of any year goes into the capital equipment fund and leave the other balance to cover any other expenses, any other expenses mm -hmm. that highway may have. They may go over budget, mm -hmm. at which point general government would have to stand for that over budget because general government covers highway regardless. There, was our um, warned item, I guess I'd have to go back and look, I thought it was, was it a set amount or was it any surplus? Any surplus. Okay, so I want to say 50% of any surplus or something. But that, you know, that's a conversation to be had with, between the select board and Toby and Alfred. Right. I, I don't know exactly what they wish. It's good something to keep wish. in mind, though, and we're thinking about this next year. I think that we're using may it, be though. a good idea. Right. Yeah. We're, we're certainly using we're it. We're use it all up if this truck is... Problem. Well, whatever you don't put into the capital equipment fund can still be used for that for purpose. capital equipment, but it yeah, can also be options. used. Yes, it, it that yeah. would be a, an optional yeah. use. I like the idea of options. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. So, in general, guys. So, so the takeaway of of this and what I am kind of grooming the select board to to incorporate into their thinking with budgeting and an understanding where you are is that even if we spend less than our budgeted amount, if we don't collect enough revenue to cover what we spend, we are in a deficit spending situation. Even though we have well, that's just the general rule. Well, so we can't look at our budget and say, ooh, looks like we're going to go under budget. You may not spend all that you budgeted mm -hmm. in expenses right. for one reason or another. But if you don't collect as much revenue as what you spend, 
yeah. at the end of the day. It's a You're deficit. in a deficit spending yeah. situation. And we find ourselves there now. We're certainly not in a deficit situation, but we are really heading into one. Once I was able to program the highway the way you see it now <coughs> and break apart the highway and general government, because now they can live independent, independent of one another. I don't have the grants kind of floating there um, on the side. What we see is this. We have not collected all of our revenues, and the vast majority of uncollected revenues come from delinquent taxes. So we'll talk about delinquent taxes in just a second. We are uh, in excess of $70,000 in uncollected delinquent taxes, for the most part from 2018 um, alone. So um, what we see is, according to our balance sheet, we have roughly $75,000 to make it to the end of the year. But we have approximately $150,000 in budgeted and expected expenses. Uh, the, large, the largest um, expenditures are the two payments for the deficit loan and the town hall loan they hit in June. The principal amount of those payments are in excess of $100,000. And we have another large payment, the, the second half of the EMFD ambulance contract, that's roughly $38,000. Then you have salaries and benefits and um, utilities and so forth for the next couple of months. So I'm um, projecting kind of $150,000 in anticipated expenditures um, between now and the end of the fiscal year. So hey, it, hang on, Sam, this says 175. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 175000 This is correct. That is correct, yes. Okay. I'm trying to go from memory, and maybe that's not such a great idea. So um, so I, I'm going to say, while it would appear that we will underspend the general government budget, what revenues are down because of the delinquent taxes. And if we were to collect all of the outstanding delinquent taxes, we would still have roughly a $25,000 deficit because we're over in clerk and clerk assistant fees due to all of the uh, elections. Right. We're over in health insurance, we will be in health insurance and supplies largely due to um, under budgeting. So um, the good news is we open this year with a very healthy uh, uh, fund balance in excess of $300,000. So we will be able to cover whatever deficit we have. And, and that's that money that we actually have. have. That is bank. what we call, yes, that is our fund balance, money in the bank. So it, you know, it's not time for nail biting, but mm -hmm. it's time for a thoughtful approach to um, how, we, how we make our expenditures for the rest of the year. It is not likely that we'll need a tax anticipation note. Um, I would have to check with the accountants and with Jim. I think because we have at such a healthy fund balance, we're not going to have to go to the taxpayers and collect that deficit, as it, in other words, put whatever the deficit is on the budget. I think we will be excused from that because our fund balance will cover it. But so I would need to check that. So can we take expenses out of the fund balance if we have a deficit? It will just simply do it. It'll reduce the fund balance. Yes. And we never set anything up to say we want to, we must have a fund balance of. That is my understanding. Right? I do not see that you have a policy that sets your fund balance at a certain percentage of your budgeted expenses. If you did and we spent more than that, I think you are lawfully bound to actually right. put that that I additional think, I don't expense think we ever on the had budget. A fund balance before. I don't. I can't answer. I that. don't ever remember that we had a fund balance. You wouldn't be able to um, track it with QuickBooks. Oh, maybe that's why. You you would. It would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So so you haven't had an opportunity to see um, mm -hmm. the tracking process, and uh, it's it. So I'm just trying to kind of ease you into these reports. They're, they're not that complicated, but we have them now 
they're pretty finely honed. Mm -hmm. And it, again, it's this is not to alarm, it's to inform. Um, one thing uh, that I, I'm here, and I wanted to come in intentionally, is to talk about um, delinquent taxes, and we'll get to that in a moment because I'm going to ask the select, select board, I'm going to encourage the select board to take a firm hand in our delinquent tax collection and ask them to uh, allow me to send a firm certified letter to certain of our, of our un, completely unresponsive delinquent taxpayers. Well, that's why I put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the point of talking about where we are in the general government, it, it, the highway money can't save us. Mm -hmm. And so now we can see, it, it kind of was, the way it was programmed, it was kind of clouding the picture. But we can, highway money cannot save the general government. The general government can only save the highway. So this is at, at exactly where we are. Um, we still have essentially a, you know, we have a healthy fund balance. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. So the delinquent tax report key is a few pages in, you're, you're going to see it, and it's followed by, I hope, a, a colored delinquent no, tax. No, it's not colored. Oh, isn't it? I'm sorry. Well, you'll see it in gray, in, uh, gray tones then. Mm -hmm. So any parcel that is highlighted in, for you, gray tones, um, those delinquent taxpayers have not contacted the office by any means, phone, email, uh, by any means. They have not entered into an agreement to pay, repay their taxes, and those agreements are sent out, if they're, they're written agreements sent out at the very beginning of the tax collection process, and they have not made any payments. So what I would like to so I am coming in to, to ask the select board to allow me to send a certified letter that simply states you've made no contact, you have no agreement, the deadline per our policy is payment in full by June 30th. If we do not receive your payment at that time, your um, parcel will be turned over to the town's attorney for tax, collect, for tax sale purposes mm -hmm. on July 15th. Um, so I invite you to take a look at that list, uh, in particular of the items highlighted in gray. And if you know something or you need to, um, so the ones that are highlighted in gray but don't have a number. Right. The ones highlighted in gray are simply the ones: no contact, no agreement, no payment. And some of the and some of the ones that are highlighted. There's just some some information I can add okay. to that. Okay. So the numbers means they're, they're so the numbers are going to correspond to right. um, the okay. key. So, for instance, number one, Paul Dunbar, he is not the owner of that parcel. That was sold after April first. The owner of that parcel currently is his a, a, as a relative of his. I believe it's his stepbrother, Homer Richardson in Worcester. Um, I am sending duplicate bills to uh, Paul. Dunbar. He called the office some months ago to say that he may very well pitch in or take care of this this <coughs> year. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's something you need to know. And I would send him a copy of that certified letter. Um, and number seven, I thought the daughter or something usually helps out. Number seven is is those. Could we just keep names? Could we get a camera going? You mean, you mean numbers? I just have We're doing numbers. 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 Okay, I know, but there's names besides the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the camera doesn't I'm see the list. I'm not focusing on the names. Well, there was a name mentioned. Oh, okay. okay. It's, well, it is public information. I know, have, but it's an embarrassing have, thing I know. for a lot of people. So that's why I said numbers. You guys are saying the same thing? Yeah. Okay. So number seven and number 14 are both parcels that were, that had 2000, had delinquent taxes for 2017 and possibly 16. They both went to tax sale, that would be number seven and 14. They were both redeemed by the owner uh, from the tax sale. So mm -hmm. the parcels are still in the uh, <coughs> possession of those owners. However, what, happens or what is happening is that 
because of the extent of the payment required to redeem these properties from tax sale, I get the sense that neither of these parcels are able to pay their 2018 taxes and no, there is absolutely no reason for me to believe that they will. Again, no contact, no yeah. agreement, n nothing. Um, and so, where we are with that is our tax bills for 2019 are going to be issued in just a few months. Mm -hmm. I, I know they've just redeemed from tax sale, but it might be to their best, in their best interest to get on this tax sale. We are putting them in a loop where they're always two, year, always two years behind, right. and it creates a burden for the town, and it also is burdensome for them, whether they can see that or yep. not because they're paying exorbitant amounts of money in attorney's fees and costs and interest over and above our penalty and in interest, right. which is quite modest, and their taxes. So I wanted to give you that information about those those two taxpayers mm -hmm. and I, uh, or those two parcels, and I would say, you know, they need to be on this list. They're they're probably not anywhere in, in any position to to get this mm. paid, and that's what and they're going to owe for the next year right. as well. Right. So that's kind of like they're on a treadmill. Kind of thing. It is. It is. And if I I might have a different thought about that. Had either one of them contacted me and said, look, let's kind of start from scratch. Mm -hmm. I can meet my next year's tax obligation. Can you let me just pay $100 a month until uh -huh. it's paid in full and I'll stay current from now on? I bring that to the board. That's not an unreasonable request mm -hmm. given how deep they got themselves dug in. Right. Because you want a payment plan that also allows for payment of that next tax bill, right. or it's right. it's worthless to them. And you want a payment plan that also eats away at the principal, not just the interest, mm -hmm. because that's not to their benefit either. No. So, so and the ones you have the little stars by, I'm assuming these are ones you're going to come to us eventually and ask oh, us to. Well, write yeah, I'm going to I'm going to see what happens. I will not be sending any more bills to amounts under one dollar. Right. That's that's a fool's game. Mm -hmm. um, they all of those intended to pay their taxes in full, and they just simply they paid off an old bill. They just got mm -hmm. here, well after right the close of the month and I hold it open as long as possible to avoid that but that um, so we, you're looking for us to authorize you to send out certified letters to the folks listed on this list highlighted in gray mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and when do you when do you want to have those letters go out by? Well, I want to wait until April 30th because the the interest charges are are good. We do not collect any more interest until the end of the month. That's the way that goes. And um, I close the month sometime around the fourth or fifth of the next month of the subsequent month to be able to sweep anybody who has put in a check on the 29th or the 30th mm -hmm. of the month. We, right. I mean, th there's plenty of room for uh, to, to, to reach out to the taxpayers and make this as painless mm -hmm. and fair process as possible. Yeah. Um, so I, it is, I, I am torn. This is a fairly sizable list, but I think that um, a number of these folks are getting into a loop. They've been on our lists in the past, and uh, it becomes burdensome for the town to carry these. And it's quite a bit of money. It is, it is. Uh, I have taxpayers who have who do not have agreements, but who have promised payments. You're gonna see uh, two, four, and five. Yeah. Um, they promised to pay by the end of And 13, and they have not, uh, it's not the end of April yet, right, so, not there yet. so I'm not worried about that. So we may eliminate four and five, which would be good. Yes, and uh, possibly two and 13 may be able to be eliminated if 
they come around. Again, they, ha they notified me by email March 28th that they would like to get this cleared up. They want to pay it mm -hmm. online, but they haven't made that payment yet. They haven't contacted me yet. So if, if they don't pay, if um, 2 and 13 don't pay, I would send them a warning letter mm -hmm. and see if they make any effort in May. And then, if not, they would get. But if we're sending a certified letter to everybody that hasn't, well, only the highlighted ones. The the hot the highlighted right. taxpayers have made no, no contact. contact. Right. Okay. Well, and except for four and five, did they're not highlighted. No, they're not highlighted. Oh, right, right. Okay, got it. That's where I'm. Thinking. So we would take whoever you Maybe know. My black and whites mixed is, up. Is I'm two so owned? Is two owned by thirteen? Yes. Okay. So um, that's the deal with that. Uh, and eight, nine, and ten is an individual who I believe requires the assistance of a third party to manage the affairs of his life. Okay. And if any of you know anything about that or have or know who name. that contact person might be, I'm worried that just the mail is just left in a pile somewhere. Could be. And, um, I and I just don't know who to contact. Well, he's the stepfather of number 11. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Well, number 11 has made one payment, and, I, and, and but will not enter into an agreement. And when I asked number 11 if they're going to be able to bring everything current by June 30th, it was literally a wave of the hand. <laughs> So let's see if they make a payment uh, mm. by the end of the month. Okay. And um, does anybody, is anyone <coughs> familiar with number 11 and feels comfortable reaching out to see who that third party um, is it caregiver number, might be? Is number 11 related to the one directly below it? Yeah, brother and sister. Yeah, but that's... I, I, I do not know the relationship, yeah. and I just, I'm not really worried yeah. about yeah. the one below it. But, yeah. it's, but um, so if you can, as a board, if, mm. if you come across information that would help, we're going to send the letter and the certified letter. And what I hope there is if it's a certified letter, some someone will be in charge of getting that from my post office that, right. and might see yeah. what's going this, this on. This person knows that individual pretty well. She's a tenant, but I think she's... Can you, um, it, do you have the means by which that I you can forward you set that. forward that to treasurycallis at gmail.com? Yeah. And then I can mm -hmm. make that reach out. Yeah. Renee Carpenter. So, I mean, that's a case. Yeah. This is why I'm, I wanted to take a moment to, yeah. to bring this to your attention, because that, I, I wouldn't want to see I mean, obviously, we want to do whatever we can to try to help people. But. Exactly. So, um, I do, do not, it, anything that is not noted with a number or a highlight, they're on a good track to get paid mm -hmm. by yeah. June 30th. And I, I, whether if they've missed their payments or modified their agreements, they're, they're making significant, um, Efforts. Efforts that are systematic and right. getting to that end point. I really appreciate the approach because the last time we talked about, that I recall anyway, I, talking about delinquent taxes and taking a next step, I felt like it had, um, the process had escalated uh, to a point to beyond this before oh. the select board was brought in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember that conversation. But I, I would, I, I'm glad that you're talking about sending a certified letter, letting us know that you're that it's time to send a certified letter, because we are not talking about um, beginning foreclosure proceedings before we even know about it, which right. is where we were last time. Yeah, I think I sort of remember that. So this is really, this is very. Well done. I think it's you know speaks to thinking about people and trying to help them as much as possible. 
So, you know, I, we as a town, we can, you know, do our best to try to help people. While we're on this topic, um, the the delinquent tax collection policy came through. Yeah, right here. Um, send it to everybody so yep. you can remember. I thought oh, we were right. going to approve it again or whatever. We might um, want to look so at that. that. Well, I, I read it. But no, I mean, a, we did it in 17. So unless right. there's changes, that, no, there are changes. Me. Then we should put it on a future agenda. Yeah, there's updates that we need to make because yeah. how we've changed in for the past few years, we've voted a different way for penalties. Okay. Um, well, in order to get what I did was I. Um, it sounds so cheesy, but in an effort to be expeditious in getting this information out to our taxpayers, I, I took a strip of paper and said, notice the penalty for 2018 is 4.5%, the interest is 0.5%. Right. Yeah. So folks, which is a much more favorable interest mm -hmm. and penalty than we've had previously and what is previously. No, no it's actually that. not. This right. was much more favorable to them. Really? Mm -hmm. It was less than a 4.5% penalty? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, messed up so we should go through, we should put this on our to-do list mm -hmm. of things fine. that we need to, yeah. that we need to update right. this policy. So we'll put it on our to-do list. So also notice too, as as we ponder how how do we s struggle our way through this because this is clearly where the deficit is. Mm -hmm. this, this really is it. In addition to overspending, which okay, in the grand scheme of things, best case scenario was maybe around twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars or a little less. That's that's not so. That well, that's, scale that that's that pretty right. good for trying to guess and not know what the weather's going to be and how much overtime the road crew's going to work and elections, extra elections. I mean, those things are, you know, easy to explain. Right. I. I but the, this lack of payment that it, that's a puzzle, right. and um, we we. I, I think the the board might have questions, but I, I am hoping the board will take a some firm mm -hmm. action along my recommendations. And I think um, if we were fat, <laughs> well, from I, it would be maybe we need we to be, be a little softer. But I, I think wanna, that's not right. What I want to see us be is fair, mm -hmm. helpful, but consistent, and everybody gets treated the same. Right. What you need to know is no bills are returned. Every bill is making its mark unless mm -hmm. the post mm -hmm. mas mistress master is throwing mm -hmm. them out the window. So uh. nothing is getting returned. Nothing. But but when but when you ask us to take firm action, I think what you mean is that we would support this. Make a motion letter. to support you, you sending being a certified you need letter. To do it. Yeah. And we'll be right behind you. Well, be, right. I'm your employee, not right. so, See, yeah. Yeah. so right. these are decisions what we that need are to do, sensitive. What we need to do is This is what Nadine did. She right. This is what we need to authorize the delinquent tax collector to send certified letters after April thirtieth to those on the list that have not made any attempt or contacted the office to set up a payment plan. And what we need to do, what happens if I say I'm turning this over to Gloria Rice, the town's tax sale attorney, we, on July 15th, I'm going to do that. That's what you have, you have, have to, have to do that. that. And that still gives us 15 extra days yeah. to Okay, so that's do the, it. the motion. That's the next letter. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So all those, in, any further questions or comments? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then the next step after this would be July, after July 15th. And is that going to be in, included in the letter that you send? The letter will be very simple. You've made, we've contacted you monthly, and I've changed the strategy. Nadine would uh, send bills on a quarterly basis. I reach out on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. so no one is in the dark about what is happening right. or, or can easily forget about it. So it will just simply say say that, lay out the reason why mm -hmm. I'm contacting them, remind them that the final due date is for payment in full, pursuant to the policy of the town, which they've received a copy of, is June 30th. And in the event that there is not a payment in full at that time, the parcel will be turned over okay. to the That's town's right. tax sale attorney for tax sale at which point on July 15th, at which point, or if that's a Sunday or Saturday, we'll, we'll right, go right. long, we won't go short, 
at which point no further uh, conversation would, can be had with the okay. delinquent tax collector. The only thing we might do, we talked about this last time and I think we asked Nadine to do it, is also do a front porch forum post generically that says we have a number of households that I, you know, from no Sandra problem. Treasurer, I, I have there are a number of households in town that I have not heard from at all about um, creating a plan to pay your taxes. Um, I've sent certified mails, ma a letter that you, you will get, but I'm using this method of communication also just to... I think we can just make it short and sweet. Yeah. It, it feels, you know, I've, we all feel uncomfortable about it. These are our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, but, but in the grand scheme of things, as of right now, they've had five months mm -hmm. to, to come up with some plan. And by June 30th, they will have had seven months. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, uh, I think it's, re I really do feel it's a reasonable policy. And yeah. as I said, if someone came to me and asked even if they owed 5000 and said, if you let me pay $75 a month or whatever, but right. I will make all the rest of my payments on time. I'd come to the board and I would recommend that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when people get themselves into a place like that, the certified letter comes and it still just goes in the mail. It so could. So seeing it on front porch form, which they may or may not do, is just another way of putting in front of them you know, yeah, generically, very, very, very yeah, generic. Whether they pay attention to it or not is up to you. Right, it's just another person. way of. Okay, sounds good. good Thank idea. you. Any uh, any other questions? And you know, it might be better if I come to the board the first meeting of the month, so that at the end of the month when instead I'm closing out, month? instead of the last meeting of the month, because okay. I'm actually closing out my books and yes. analyzing the data mm -hmm. and putting this report together, which... Okay. We can do that. And it, it would give you an opportunity to take a look at it, because I would send it to Katie, she'd put it up in the Google Docs, mm -hmm. and then it, it, you... Maybe that would be more meaningful to you, but that is up whatever to is going to whatever way you no, think is going to be the best way for us to understand and know what's going on. If you want to make it the first meeting of every month, that's fine. You can do that. It's no problem. So, real quick, one last thing. Let's take a look at that balance sheet, and that oh boy, is to say several pages down. But hang on, balance sheet before the delinquent tax. The balance sheet is be, is yeah. uh, is it before the delinquent tax? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the the balance sheet, hang on, let me just. And it's only is it. it just it's only just one sheet? Yeah. Huh. That's assets and liabilities. You know sorry. what it is? <coughs> it's several pages past the delinquent tax report. Yeah, it says one of one. One and it's of got one. Assets, liabilities. Correct. Fund balance. That's it. it. It will look just like what's on the screen. So uh, oh, there's our fund balance. Okay. And there it is. And um, most importantly, we, I, I, again, I want, um, we want to be thoughtful about how we go forward to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The due to do from that six hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back. Go back. Uh, up at the top. Um, I don't know which one of you is scrolling. Cliff. There it is. Under assets, we yeah. have due to do from that negative six twenty six. I still don't understand due to do. Oh, from. I see what you mean. Okay. See that? Yep. So that again, a reminder that that is money that is not the towns to spend. We there's the highway equipment mm -hmm. is in that, and if you look at the next, if you're in your packet and you look at the next page, you're going to see. Oh, thank you, Cliff. You're going to see a rundown of Due what to. we have. Okay, now I got you. And uh, of note, uh, I know Cliff and Denise meet with the town hall committee mm -hmm. for, uh, very often. They have $92,000 as of today. I don't know what their estimate for completion is, but that is the money they have in the bank. Um, we're going. We're probably likely to end with a some small, hopefully small deficit at the end of this year, and we want to be careful. Uh, the board may be asked to use 
the town hall fund reserve fund, reserve fund. that's 42,000 yeah. and in July it will get another 10 so um, you know when what we want to be careful of is that we don't invade our fund balance as, as that project goes along well you mean invade it to pay for the renovation yeah because where would we get the money to how would we recoup that money unless it can be used for the renovations. I mean, I guess that's something we have to think about. No, your fund balance, The what we started the year with was your $300,000 plus, yeah, no, right? Right. And then we're gonna have a deficit that will reduce that going into mm -hmm. FY20. So you wanna be careful that mm -hmm. you don't deficit that further with that renovation because there's no grant, uh, there's the accessibility grant that right. would support right. that, but there's no other grant that would support that. And I don't think donations can go into your fund balance. That's not lawful. They would just... Well, donations are a donation. Right, but I mean, they are, they have to be booked right. to right. the town hall fund, so they won't, it won't be, they can't reimburse the town. It's oh, a donation. It's separate. Yeah. It, from a from a right. legal standpoint and a tax standpoint, mm -hmm. so you you want to be very careful and and just continue to touch base again. I don't know mm -hmm. where that project is. It might be really close to that. But th this is basically, as I'm understanding what the fund balance is, it's a. Uh, it sounds like it's a cushion that's built up over. I, I, you can almost say it's a savings account, but yeah. that is so not the correct term. It's it's the fund balance, and what that fund balance allows you to do is not um, take a tax anticipation note, right. right? Because our year ends June thirtieth, but we don't start our first tax collection effort until September. So right. you have to cover right. two, or rather, uh, two twelfths of your. And next that, fiscal year, and you have. Do you have to pay that back into here? I'm sorry. Does that money have to get like? Where does it? No, we can. It, no, it, it would just build. It would just. It covers it, and it just builds back up. But where does it come from? Where did three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars come from? That is the audited amount that Sullivan and Powers found to the good when they reviewed our books for FY 16, it's, I don't, I, that, I. It's sort of, it's just. They, uh, it was they audited there, 17 and 18. And that was one of the oh, things that you said. You, you took a, a deficit loan. Right. And those loan proceeds went into your oh, account oh, and yeah. would have in mm -hmm. part funded that well, we deficit. We have to pay back a loan. Right. I mean, somewhere, somewhere, no matter where they, found it, it, it must have come over time from something, from collecting taxes, collecting taxes and not spending it from and revenue, loan. But, great you revenue a, but a loan has to be paid back. But you, but you well, said, yeah, but it's you still said, pop, it's, a, it's, it's, but it's still a fund. pile of money, it's in the checking account, and, and, and you, the, but you, and you said QuickBooks it. never was able to track that, QuickBooks right? can't so track it. So it was something it. that we maybe had and didn't know we had. Right. But, but I also think your deficit loan funded your deficits for the for the last five years, as I understood it. I, I was not here right, at that Right, we time. did do that this past year. So, it, are there loans outstanding yeah. that the revenue, the money could have come from that instead of taking out a loan? Mm -hmm. Deficit loans? No, 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 no. Loans that we still owe. You owe the deficit. You need to pay back that deficit loan. You yeah. took two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Is that a five year? Yes. Yeah. And then and so you're on year two. And then we have the town hall, so have, so the town goes, office yeah. bond. Mm -hmm. Is that is is that that should that be in here? No, that's, 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 that's a budgeted a, expense. That has its own budget. home in the budget. But now, but now the deficit loan though has a budgeted. It, the payback yeah, has right, a budgeted yeah. amount, but, but the use of it is not restricted. The use of it went right into the, uh, was just posted as deficit loan proceeds. Yeah. It had its own posting, uh, its own budget line or revenue line in that case. And it came in and it covered your deficits. Mm. So, or, about, yeah, so your point, I think I'm hearing two things. One is um, this 
we might have liabilities on this 318 mm -hmm. that we need to be remembering. But and and the point you started with is don't let projects like the town hall renovation chip away at this money. You, you're going to want to try. I mean, and if they're twenty or $30,000 short from their goal in this phase, the board can make that decision whether they're going to, to basically go over budget with mm -hmm. the understanding that donations and so <coughs> forth that are from a tax and IRS standpoint Donations to a nonprofit organization have to be posted and go into that mm -hmm. renovation right. fund and would be used for the next phase, not to pay the right. town back. Right. But that, right. I'm, I'm, well, all I'm saying is be be thoughtful. That's mm -hmm. be thoughtful. There's more than the 92. There's the 42. So the and there will and so they the have 130 thousand dollars to really get to the end. Except for you said the 42. Was or the, the forty nine was, sorry. The, was the reserve and the board can decide. Right, itself. that's what I'm saying. The board I, I cannot do that on my own initiative. Yeah. When we're done with that, when I get to the bottom of that ninety two, and there's still bills coming in, and there's still bills coming in, I would have to ask the board to whether I can pay them right. or not. That to authorize is, spending from the town hall reserve fund to yeah. pay for the renovation. And then, and beyond that, gotcha. if the board chooses to do that, you would need to. Um, indicate that to me again that is mm -hmm. outside of my bailiwick because that affects your fund balance right. and that's not my call so we're into the almost the end of April we got May and June so we'll have to be keeping a close eye on that I, as I said they may be very close to the end on mm -hmm. that project and that may be that may be enough money for them but but it's now that we can pinpoint things and mm -hmm. see where we are in yes. time it's it's just it's a useful tool. So our next meeting would be May 9th for the town hall, unless something comes up and it's sooner than that. But to my knowledge, it's May 9th. So we'll have to get, um, is there a way to run a report of all the town hall expenses? Oh, yes, and I've, I've done that okay. a few I've, times. Yeah, if we could get that, that might help. So Donna matches up that report with her report. records to right. make sure that I haven't posted anything to that particular budget line that doesn't belong there. We found one uh, bill that should have gone to a different, it, to the East Callis grant, mm -hmm. but otherwise it's solid. Good. And your figures match? Um, she does bookkeeping different than I do. I'm on a cash basis and mm -hmm. it what goes in and what goes out. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Cash went in, donations yeah. go in. We book the expenses out of one line, mm -hmm. so it's just the net of yeah. of what came in, the loan and donations minus the mm -hmm. expenses made. It's a simple, that is exactly what that number is. Yeah. Okay. Well, so Donna's like tracking you. across di different fiscal years mm -hmm. as well. Okay, anything else you want to talk about? I, I, I have a about? general question. At this this slide out on the surety fund for the McCullough pit. But did we never get that? Did they never fund the surety bond? Oh, uh, the, the surety. In that regard? The no, surety has. Zero. There's money on that. There is. Okay. Yeah. I think that's in one of your written. Okay. It just, it just says zero it there. It says zero, but that's. Is that it? Wouldn't go there because it's no, it's it wouldn't set aside. It is set aside yeah. in its own account. Okay. It is not so sitting sure in our checking okay. account. It um, was at one time, but it, it's not. So it that's belong there. Okay. Yeah. John on her notes on the first page under notes, general government revenues notes number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's mentioned right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. This is Thank really you. interesting mm -hmm. and very well It's like well a thesis done. project yeah. every, it is. every it quarter is. or something. It's like, every, like, wow. Every month. Every month. Every month. Well, you you're going to, you, you know, we'll do this a few more times. And, and then it'll start to make sense. And it will. You'll become more and more comfortable with it yeah. because it, it, you just, you haven't had the benefit of a program that does what this program does. And it would be darn near, it would be yeah. really difficult to, to do it otherwise. And you'll see 
Well, but for instance, the highway fund, it just nets itself right out. There's all your uh, related highway revenues minus all your expenses. Boom, at the end, we know there's no more conversation with the highway department. About what's the balance. About what the balance is or how it works. It's or it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, just, right. it's just the number is there. Yep. And then we book it over. So Alrighty. I think very good. Thank you so much. You won't struggle. I, it's soon. You won't ha have hardly any questions. You'll should point my mistakes out. To you. So dust off your tax collector hat. That's right. 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 It's been right. wearable for a while. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very oh, much. Are those some pictures from Doug? Yep. Oh. Oh, that's her oh. car parked on the road. It yeah. is on the road. Oh my goodness. That's like it. <laughs> on the road. That's why like the whole lane of traffic. But why am I not surprised? Mm -hmm. <gasps> right. I mean, it's mm -hmm. terrible. Uh, um, really, I mean, the car is one thing. The horses are back. Is oh and my that road, gosh. And that is below Dot's house, like down more Downhill, south yeah. towards Worcester. But, Wister. but Wister. she would have had, no, but she was complaining because she would have had to go past there. So is it before? Downhill no, they were in town. They might have come out. She was coming down the Worcester. Worcester. Come out Worcester and come up. There's a lot. Yeah, because there's yeah. Yeah. a pavement right to the Cumberland. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be the smarter way That's to go. That's terrible. Well, oh my gosh. That needs to be like. That's a nice parking we can, spot. We can hire a tow truck and tow that. In the, yeah, I think, right I think some the sheriff needs to no, knock on your door and just say, Lady, move your car. You got. Mm. We can put a notice sticker on, on the windows. Maybe we should get stickers stick on people's windows. Just trying to think of the best way to handle this. Um, I could have my well, we son have an talk We have an well, ordinance. We have an ordinance about parking. You guys were dealing with this. I was out last yeah. summer when you were dealing with it. But isn't there somebody that? Well, she had a she had a wagon parked in the road, and Wilson talked to her about it and said you can't leave it there. And she wanted to argue. Is that an all-wheel drive car? Did she get that off the road? It's a Subaru. It's a Subaru. Is that a Subaru? Oh. She did say she has a little silver, silver Subaru. That's right. right. No. I mean, I don't know that the sheriff, I don't know that this is their thing to do. As far as what we contract with them for, I'd have well, to Do ask. we have an ordinance that says? Yeah, we have an ordinance, parking ordinance. Parking ordinance can't be in the travel part of the room. We do have winter, winter maintenance. Order. And did you find it? I didn't find it, but I know from because I was with Wilson when he talked to her about the wagon. I think this, said, this is within my fine. jurisdiction to tell you that you yeah. can't leave it there. And now she's got the car instead of the horses. Instead of the wagon. Well, if we have an ordinance, we have to show for a ticket. Yeah. I can double check it and contact Sam. And it's not the right said. way to go. <clears throat> we just spent 20 minutes talking about how to handle people with delinquent taxes. With we can ask her to move it. With yeah. kindness and. Yeah, I mean, I think that approach has been used historically for everything else with her. And she hasn't done anything that we've asked her to do, really. But can you give her a heads up? I don't know where I think I think we could ask Wilson maybe to go there mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And he's a neighbor, friend, relative, something. Wilson, he's our constable. Okay. And he's dealt with her before with the horses and the wagon mm -hmm. and everything else. I and mean, this doesn't involve animals, so we, he wouldn't go there as animal control. He would go there as constable. I was just talking to him about just that state. Oh, okay. called constable. This is the right the constable. Here's, that's all right. Sort yeah. of like a. That's our police. police. Well, that's our policing force in town. Right. That's all we have. Yeah, yeah, and then so if that good. doesn't do any good, and we've done our due diligence to try to handle there, it. snow removal and parking ordinance. Yeah, yeah. we can go to talking to the sheriff. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, and nope. I don't. Nope, number one doesn't do it, guys. What's the snow else? I'm not sure that we have a whole a parking ordinance for this. Parked on a. We do 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, nothing about travel portion? Between November 1 and April 1. No, but that doesn't talk about. And we're already past April 1. Exactly. Where do vehicles parked on the public highways? We got to amend it. The vehicle owner, motor vehicles parked on the public highways of the town of Cal's in violation of the above prohibitions shall be towed. But. <coughs> 
But we don't park in automobiles on the southern side. We don't have to travel. I, is that Worcester Road? No. It's Collar Hill. It's Collar Hill. Yeah. Oh, she's in Collar Hill. Right. Yeah. No. But the above prohibition, nothing is. No, 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 don't tr covered. her. No, mm -hmm. she's not triggered here. No. no. I mean, nothing that we have in our ordinance. And this is. You had to have traveled portion of the road amendment. Um. Town wide. I think of it. What are the words? Use of town highway right of way. There we go. What does that say? Don't plant flowers on the town highway. <laughs> right, John? Yeah. Get the water. Get the market motor. No planting trees in the middle of the road. Exactly, trees and shrubs, that's what this is about. <laughs> oh, this is just to do stuff in the right of way. This is John's mm -hmm. shrub. Yeah, that's that old one. And Winchester and they put together. Back when we were young. So if she's parked in the right of way and the pile truck goes by and knocks her car into the ditch, between November and April. <laughs> but no, I don't think this is November and April. Not that the town. We're still responsible not to hit people. Right, right. The right of way. We're, we're, someone hits them, they're liable, the person who hits them. Right. Mm. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know if there's a state statute that says you can't check. I it. guess that's what I want to know because our ordinance doesn't cover this. Mm. Right. And it's not a class four road, right? Mm -hmm. No. Standards. I don't think we have anything that gets us on the having anything to say about this. Well, well. You know, we just say we've had some complaints and and the guys can't even get out and repair the road. You got to move right. the car and keep it out of people's way. And that's the only thing we can really do is oh, ask Wilson to go and talk to her. Well, well. Hmm? There might be a Vermont law here. Motor vehicles, operation of vehicles, uh, Title 23, Tell Section that. 1101. Is that the town highways? Well, it's all highways in the state. No person shall stop, park, or leave standing any vehicle, whether attended or unattended, upon the paved or maintained portion. part of a highway within that portion of a highway right of way, which the traffic committee finds to be dangerous location. Or what where yeah. So what is going on in there? So you oh, can't park it in the middle of the road. Chimes. <laughs> so can you forward that to me? I am no. reading right now. What are you reading, John? I can send you all twenty three BSA eleven oh one. Yeah. Right. It's so that that the sheer if can rat T gave we can Wilson give her a call. Yeah. And uh um, you know, listen to you too, Katie. Just because you're so interested. What is the traffic committee? That, that's only, that's if they're, that's, not this that's outside the portion. Right. Um, or travel on the road, road, or within that portion of a highway right away, which the traffic committee. That's separate. Come on, go off. Um, all right. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, either way, it, it seems like. All right, is anything else? Um, some of this stuff should be fairly quick. Be nice. Um, yeah, be nice. Be nice. All right, you saw the letter that went to the neighbors about the upcoming, there's going to be an, a DRG hearing on the change of use for the town hall. That's on May, May 6th or May 2nd, I can't remember. With one May 2nd. Um, a letter went to the neighbors. We just thought it was a nice thing to do to give them a heads up kind of thing about what is going on with the town hall, the ones that are most affected. Um, really for support. Right, for support for the DRB hearing. Donna was going to come tonight, but it's way past her bedtime, so she's going to come on the 6th. Good night, Sandra. Good night, Sandra. Thank night, you. Sandra. Don't get lost in a moment. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. No. 
was supposed to be. As your bedtime. If I was stuck on the road somewhere. Oh, that was uh, nice of him. Yeah. Not that he would have helped you, but. No, he would have sent you, John. Just wanted to know whether that. Uh, Never mind. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, leave it at that, right. John. <laughs> um, so we'll get Donna to come in and do a financial update. And actually, the timing might be really good since we just talked with Sandra about mm -hmm. town hall funds. Um, Act 46 and the CDRPC. Act 46, the only thing going on, and it's not really Act 46, is the meeting tomorrow night at the school at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, about the easement documents and stuff, but that's separate and aside from Act 46. Um, I won't be there at 6, but Gregory will. Okay, good. Well, you want me to vote for you? How do you want me to vote? And he's bringing John Winston. Okay, good. Yeehaw. All right, CVRPC. Anything? He's got dots. Anything, John, or CVRPC? Um, no, I missed the last meeting. He was stuck in the mud. No, I spaced out. I got my account the second Tuesday and I missed. A Tuesday? I screwed up. Oh my. Age related. Yeah, okay, so. Said, Where were you? I'm like, it's next week. Can you call this up? Uh, I hate that. Senior moment. There was no way I could remember all these appointments and reappointments without putting it down. I like it when you do that. That's so easy. Okay, you ready? I think I sent it to. Maybe it didn't. I didn't it's right there. It Isn't it the Gmail, the swim committee? Oh no, that was just from them. Never mind. Right. It might be. Katie just put it in. Uh, it's in there. It's called something funny. It's at the top. Um, it's it's the one. Word document 42519 meeting. Oh. Yeah, or that one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I said 425. I've got 425. On the brain, I guess. Yeah, they look better on the brain. Beach 420. All right, so. Not if you're in college. Oh, is that right? Oh, my. All right, do you just want to go through and we can do these? Um, swim committee. There's Katie, Lisa McCarthy, Dylan Burns, Lori Grigg. Those are all reappointments, and they're all one years. And then I assume, Katie, that this Daniel Kennessy mm -hmm. is to replace Mark Whitman. It didn't say that on your email, but I looked at the appointment list, mm -hmm. and that would make sense, right? Yeah, he, Mark Whitman continues to help, just doesn't want to be the committee. Does not want to be on the committee. Okay, so I would make a motion that we reappoint those that I listed um, to the swim committee for one year. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And the new appointment would be Daniel Kennessy Kenny. To replace Kenny. K E N N E Y, right? Keeney. Is, is it Keeney or Kenny? Keeney. 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 Um, to replace Mark Whitman, also for a term of one year. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next, Planning Commission. Their terms are four years. We have Jan Olson and Ronnie Shaw expiring. So I would make a motion that we reappoint them to the Planning Commission for the terms of four years. Second. Aye. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Gospel Hall Warden, one year term, Andy Felice. He's the guy that's right off the radio. Right. There. Right. Yeah. So that was a motion. Second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Webmasters, this is a motion, one year terms. These are existing webmasters Katie, Lane Karnas, Judy Roberts, and Scott Bassage. I think we should interview Katie. <laughs> you better not. Qualified for that. You better not. What makes you a master at webbing? She's been doing it for you, do you a ever spider? That's basically what's going to happen. She's on the swim committee. You yeah. get it? Oh, uh, web. Web. Oh, oh good one, Rose. God. Okay. All right. All those in favor? She's a say knitter. I might qualify. Aye. 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 spider. Okay. We talked about appointing Scott as the second alternate to the CV fiber for one yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, is that a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, and if Katie will have us as her, yes, her favorite board. Yeah. That's uh, true. Um, would you continue as our recording yes, secretary? Please. Awesome. Thank you. Katie. Okay, thank That's you. That's a motion. Thank you. All those in favor. <laughs> Second. Uh, please say aye. 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 Dam monitors. 
Um, and they were, Boy, they, they, were, were busy. They, were, they were busy over the weekend. I think they knew they were coming up for reappointment. I think so. <laughs> and when all this was going on, Artie chimed in and says, I'll help, I'll yeah, help. Yeah, I saw that, 24-7. Yeah. So anyways, the current dam monitors are Louis Franco and Chris Miller. The terms are for one year, so I would make a motion that we reappoint them as dam monitors. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And Artie Tulis as a new dam monitor for one year. That's a motion. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Tulis is T O U L I S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, tree warden Neil Maker is the tree warden, and Drew Lamb is his assistant. They're one year terms. I make a motion that we reappoint them. Second. Aye. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 E911 coordinator, that's one year currently. It's Ann Winchester. Um, I make a motion that we reappoint her. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's all I could get to for this meeting. What about Stephanie and Larry? We did those because I checked the minutes. We already did those okay. uh, oh. previous meeting because I double checked. Okay. okay. Um, dog warrant. <laughs> Yep. Elizabeth and Wilson and Elizabeth. Didn't we, didn't we already do that? Dog work? At the um, special mm -hmm. meeting. No, 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 because it wasn't on the agenda. You couldn't do it. Okay. Well, John gave it to everybody to sign. We did. Well, it wasn't legal because it wasn't on the agenda. Okay. Well, Is that the first illegal thing you saw? <laughs> Probably. Ooh. I don't even know what happened to it because I never saw it. Just kidding. I mean, Judy never got it, obviously, because she gave really? it. Really? She said, here, please do this. So I said, okay. All right, I would make a motion that we approve the dog warrants. What is this, now that we're going to do it again? What are we approving? We are approving that um, Wilson has the authority to impound dogs if they're not licensed. Um, is this just something we do every year? We just we yeah. do this every year, and okay. that way letters can go out. Okay, it's not because of something special that happened. No, 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 no it's every okay. year, because people don't get their dogs licensed, and yeah, then they yeah. get picked up and they're not licensed. No, that's fine. I, I wasn't clear yeah. whether we were doing it. I think it's part of the state statute. It is it's like you do Yeah, the and it's clearly drawn in the statute. Yeah. 22nd, right? 22nd. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. All no, those in I favor, please say aye. 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 And it lists the dogs on there, too? It lists yeah. the owners, and the, okay. it even lists the dogs' names. Oh. Hmm. I didn't look at it to see if there was anybody in here. Can, can you multitask? Or are you, yeah. I, won't, I won't go down that other road. So, multitasking, and then... No, yeah. we don't have time. I can't chew gum and drive a tractor at the same time. Oh, okay. So you want to just, I mean, Cliff did an awesome job with the RFP and sending yeah, it out it was and great. Thank responding you. to inquiries. So do you want to give any update at all? I can um, say that um, of the vendors that I proactively sent the RFP to, all of them acknowledged receiving it except for one. Um, of those who acknowledged receiving it, uh, one of them has already come to the town office, uh, met with myself and the cool. staff, and did a walkthrough mm -hmm. to familiarize them. The vendor wanted to be familiar with what we had, mm -hmm. that was so good on their they part. could make their best recommendations. So mm -hmm. definitely, a, wow, very a nice. Good thing there. Do um, we have any accountability to let other vendors know that one of the letter? No, I don't think we have. Why do we have to tell? Oh, what was that invite? Yeah. That was already invited. Yeah, so, oh, okay. That was yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a, some kind of one. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. We we encouraged it. Yeah. Is how okay. we phrased it. Okay. Because Cliff said if you want to do a walkthrough or have any questions, to contact him. Okay. Perfect. Um, no one has contacted me with any other questions. Um, I we do have one other vendor who we are meeting with on um, May 9th. Um, and it's our existing vendor. Right. Um, what else? Um, it's not something I. Have you gotten any more questions other than the? I haven't gotten any other uh, hmm. questions or inputs, but generally, 
Um, we did, as I said in the email I sent to everyone, um, we had it published in the Hardwick Gazette, and it ran um, through Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday edition of the Montpelier Times. Did we get Friday's. any interest from those? Uh, I haven't direct. had anybody contact me as a result of those. It's also published on the classified portal at the VLCT website. Wow. Um, and I am perusing a list of uh, other potential vendors that's uh, offered by the Vermont Department of Digital Services. Um, mm. So there may be some other entities mm. that I proactively contact and say, hey, this is going on, and you're welcome to um, play along. Um, and then I've created a uh, spreadsheet. I won't go into it right now, but at some point I'll put it in the folder so everyone can access it because we will. Do we have use a separate? This. Do we have a separate IT folder? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, it's basically it will help me keep track of who's contacted us, the questions and whatnot that have come up, because. What we may want to do is, as questions come in, we may want to um, publish those questions to the website along with the answers so that if other vendors have the same questions, mm -hmm. they can, they can yep. see it. Excellent. He's done a great job. At so that's... And, and you're, you're still able to go to work? He works from home. While they, yeah, but he's still going to work. While they're willing to have me, yes. <laughs> that's another sleep. subject. Oh, dear. Jeepers. Um, no, I sleep. Maybe. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Yes, Excellent absolutely. Work. Okay, are you ready for my update? And yeah. then I was hoping we could go into executive session for personnel oh, that matters very quickly. Okay. okay, so my update, I don't know if you read it, I've been going to these volunteer Woodbury Fire Department meetings. Yes. Um, the last meeting, which was last Thursday, I actually did make it to it. Um, and a preliminary design, I don't want to call it an RFP because it wasn't really an RFP, but that's the closest thing I could think to call it, went to those um, architects as listed, and only two responded because only two responded. And we did a, had a brief presentation by each one, and the group unanimously picked Patrick Kane, and just as things are, because Vermont is small, Patrick Kane actually um, gets assistance on projects from John McCullough. Mm -hmm. um, their estimated project costs, they're looking at between $500,000 and $750,000. Um, and our next meeting, our next meeting is when the, when Patrick Kane and John McCullough come back with some kind of a, something they've drawn up to show everybody. And they're thinking they might be able to enlist the help of local people, their road crew, as we have done with the town hall, wow. to, de to demolish and remove the old house and the old garage. But we got to look. So they're not, I mean, that was one option was to fix that house. So. Yeah, and it's just, it's not viable. It's, it's just a wreck. wreck. It's just a wreck. Even the old house is, wow, it's too bad. Yeah, and something just fell off the house or the roof. The porch, like, front porch, something fell off. Something fell off just recently. I think it got crushed. Smell. I think I saw it the other day. Mm. Maybe. Green Up Day, just remember it's Saturday, May 4th, and the hours are extended. It's from 9 to 1, it's at 9 to noon. Mm -hmm. that's, and the, that's the drop off. That's the drop off, and, the two, and there's two drop off locations now. It's the same one at the old dump, mm -hmm. and then at Maple Corner. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to skip over three for right now. We had a meeting, again, another meeting I made last week. Tuesday, the 16th, here at the office, we met with Pam DeAndrea and her this kind of watershed consulting people. I think I think Katie puts some stuff in the folder for tonight's meeting that you might watershed want to look at. Watershed consulting yep. associates. Yep. We had a, a good meeting with them. There was people, Larry Bush was there, Andre, Jan was there. Andres Teresa was he there? Who? Andres Teresa. No, he wasn't there. So anyways, um, it was a good meeting. They did it. Um, Toby was there. Alfred was working on the road, so he wasn't.
but they did this ranking thing and I think those are in the folders of the projects to get done first. So anyways, I just wanted you guys to see that so you know what was going on, but I'm going to ask Pam to come to a select board meeting after May 13th okay. to give an update to the whole board and explain it and she can show all the great things on the screen. Um, Greta Grant has been approved. I don't know if you've noticed on the yes, yes. forum, they're looking for two, <coughs> two people to work at the Greta Grant program again. It's only about 20 of your kids. I was going to text like one of my kids. Yeah. Um, that's done. Emerald Ashbor grant has been received and signed. Um, we got a note from Ben Green a couple of weeks ago. He's the state dam safety person, and they were out a couple of weeks ago and did a review of the dam. And I don't know how it works if they give us. Well, it wasn't. There was a contract. I don't think it was Ben Green. No, but he had those people come out. Oh, yeah. I think but that's a survey a of all the dams. But do we get a report or something? I think we're doing a, re a, set, a risk assessment, okay. risk analysis of all the dams. Well, he's the only name I really knew, so I asked him to come out again and check out the dam after the recent events. I think I CC'd you guys on stuff going on with the dam, just so you know. If you don't want to get stuff like that to know what's going on because nobody ever responds, just let me know and I won't CC you. The you mean the grants, the, the, the grants? The Curtis Pond Dam when it was really wild. I mean, if you don't want to get them, I don't. No, I like them. to get them, but I always try to okay. reserve not to respond because we're not right. supposed to do business exactly. on email. Right. Okay. I just want so to make sure like I'm not to, clogging yep, up your no, emails. I read no, them. no, 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 no. And, and we didn't get it from Lewis originally. We got it only because you brought us. Right. Up. Okay. The yeah. only the only question I have, and this probably takes us down a rabbit hole, um, but is it's been. We have a legal opinion somewhere. So, what point number one is? Does somebody have that? Because that yes. will all happen before. Yeah, we, we're going to have to dig all that stuff out. Because the only thing I wonder about is liability. Well, we all engage, no, we don't. The extent to which the town is in, appears to be engaged. I think the only reason we are is because we have this, which we need to look at at some future meeting, is this. Because as a town, if it were to breach, then we are responsible for evacuations and things like this. And some of the material in here, some of the names and stuff is old. Right. So we need to update it. That doesn't, by doing this, that doesn't mean we're, we own 15 it. 15 years? Right. Doesn't mean that we own it. Wow. So anyways, like I said, I don't, you know, I want to keep you guys informed. Absolutely. I don't want to choke up your email. You know what yeah. I mean? Because we all get enough of it. This is before we did the... Uh, the legal review as to ownership of the dam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, yeah maybe I actually would say to take take me off it when it comes in front of the select board and we're talking about it. <coughs> but in the meantime, I think it's just an FYI. So if know. you're just are you I can't remember these. Did you just forward it to us or because here's the I can't thing. remember when when I've had this conversation with taxpayers who think oh we're not respondent we're not responsive. To who? Oh, well, anybody. People who send us oh, stuff. Oh, people in town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if, so if people who send you that stuff are seeing that we all get it and we don't respond for the reasons. Then it looks. I can BCC people. That would be that would be fine too. Okay. Yeah. BCC right. And then we just, are all just, emergency board, so we. Right. We're all emergency board. management if something happens. But I can just BCC or try to remember to just forward. But I just like you guys. I mean, I figure like yeah, you should yeah, know no, what's going on. In case from that know. standpoint, that's absolutely fine. It's yeah. all. It's just like yeah, FYI. You guys be ticked if you didn't know when the dam blew out. Right. <laughs> And everything was blown I mean, I just up. feel like it's my. I, I want to make sure you know what's. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, no, I definitely saw it. Okay, great. Um, Judy's going to be on vacation the 25th through, I think it's through the 30th. She might be back on the 30th or she might be it's back on the 1st. So I can't remember exactly now which one. Um, upcoming meetings we have. All right, so we have May 6th, nothing yet. May 13th is a regular select board meeting. We were going to meet with the Cemetery Commission that night, but after the Fire Department meeting the other week, we're going to meet with the East Montpelier Select Board in executive session. Jim Barlow is going to attend on May 13th at 6 o'clock. And I know Rose is available because I asked her about it for the other purpose. And, and then we're I'm meeting gonna, where? Here. 
May 27th, here's the problem, May 27th is Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. We used to always meet on Memorial Day until last year. What do people want to do? No? I do not want to. Let's uh, get your garden if you can. All right, then. You said you were having a beer on a picnic. Oh, that's not I a did. crazy weekend. That's what you said. So much. when, so then our next meeting, if we don't meet on the 20th, if we meet on the 13th. I'm going to plant my potatoes. Okay, so if we don't, if we meet on the 13th and we don't meet on the 27th, the next meeting is June 10th. We can meet on the 28th. You know, it's a holiday, so you meet the day after. We could. Yeah. I don't know if people are available. Sure. Not at six. Well, because <coughs> we need to meet with the cemetery commission. 28th. On the 28th. But Rose isn't available at six. Yeah, I'm available at when's their so regular. Why would you do six? So we can meet with them ahead of a regular select board meeting, or we can do it at seven. Do it at seven. Yeah. We're meeting for them, really. All right, well, let me see if they are available. I wanted to check with you guys first. Um, okay, so do that. They have a regular meeting scheduled for the 22nd. 22nd. It's so a Wednesday. May 22nd? Cemetery Commission. Mm -hmm. I can't do that like that. That's a, I have a health center board meeting the fourth Wednesday of every month. Mm -hmm. Stay in the commitment. So the 28th looks like the best possible way. Is there, okay, are you able to tentatively put that on the town calendar while we're right here? No. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it right now. Just put it down with a special select board meeting. Do we say the 28th at 7? The 28th. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have my calendar here, so I think it's, I think it's okay. All right, next. Now will be here, right? Yes. Next is volunteer dinner. How do people feel about doing that on a weekend? Uh, afternoon. I was thinking about seeing if we could do it at the town garage. The trucks will be all out. We could set up tables, get it catered. It's a big space. Mm -hmm. um, all the people that do volunteer stuff for the town that have never seen the garage. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. And it might it's highly scenic. Yes, it's very it's very aesthetically pleasing. You could dress it up, get flowers, yeah, flowers on the tablecloth. And it might really sit, you know, it might really mean a lot to the highway crew. Yeah. I think they can get Alfie to help me lend some chairs in my truck to take over. You, you think so? Where yeah. did you get those chairs and tables last time? Remember? Well you brought them. Yeah, I came here to get the the chairs and Alfie was here. So I had to make a cover story really quick to the office staff saying, oh yeah, I just said I could borrow these because I got some friends coming over and having a little impromptu get together. And the office said, oh, well, you want some help? Oh, no. Right. <laughs> it's right. Uh, oh, that's oh, right. Oh, that's right. That's pretty funny. So what do you guys think would be a good date to do something like that's this? Good, good. It's going to be warmer so we can have the doors open to the, hey, to the garage. You want to do it in May? Or June? That's Black Friday. Yeah, yeah they don't go inside the garage. They won't go inside the garage, right? Yeah, they stay at the edge of the door, waiting for because us. it smells like diesel. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. They don't like going indoors. They're a weird bug. Mosquitoes do. Oh yeah. Okay, so town garage. And remember the caterer we had for Alfred's party? Mm -hmm. That was good. It was a it was a barbecue kind of thing. Um, really good. And you know they could set up and do a, a barbecue out. Oh. You know have their grills outside and then. Parking lot, I was thinking, which would be nice. Mm -hmm. Help drive bugs off, too. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we could play some music. I don't know, just make it a little more yeah. fun. What was Moe's Mo's backyard, I think, was the name yep. of the place? That's, that is yeah. the place, yes. Um, you gonna come, Jerome? Yeah, we'll invite Jerome. Sure. He's volunteer, as far as we're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Probably as far as he can say, too. Um, and then we just need to come up with a date. And maybe the thing to do is that maybe I should call the Smoe's backyard and see what his availability is, because he might be getting sure. booked up. Weekends are going to be crazy. Um, we could do it on a Friday afternoon. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm busy, but we're all busy, and you'll find the best we have enough dates. Yeah, we'll be considered. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get, right? Yeah. 
All right, why don't I call this Mo's backyard and ask them how their schedule looks? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Sounds okay. Good. Sounds good. No vegans on this select board. Oh, Katie. Right. Nice. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> any? Oh, we need to do some minutes. Can we not do minutes? We can do not do minutes. I didn't read the minutes. I did, and I had some comments, but we can wait till next time. We were pretty caught up on minutes. We were. We oh. got like three or four sets that we should be doing. Really? Oh, because we got all special meetings. Well, yeah. I didn't read the minutes. So. All right, we can postpone them. They're, they're up, so it's no big deal. All right, um, is there any other business, old business, new business? I just had a question. Maybe we can't take any decisions, but um, this email that Toby sent regarding the emergency plan, uh -huh. and he said, oh, well, you could approve it on your meeting for May 6th. The LEOP? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not meeting on May 6th. We're not, and also, uh, according to the document, it looked to me like it would have to... Needs updating. Um, be submitted by the 1st. On May, well, we've been late before. Okay. That was I usually question. just let... Um, used to be Laura at CVRPC. Now they're fine. I was going to let Laura know that they should right. be fine. Yeah. Oh, I meant to bring this up with Alfred. I remain concerned about it. I think it's a basswood tree that leans over severely. Big, heavy tree leans over. Um, That's what like the road. was basswood. What they cut off of the top of Jack Hill and Moscow Woods last year. Yeah, that was I think basswood, it was. wasn't it? Yeah, I just worried. I mean, it's leaning onto the road, so the root, the roots under the road, aren't supporting you it, send, right? Right. And so it's the roots on this side, and it's right down to the pond. I, can I'm you just send, waiting for a big one to come. Can you send Alfred um, and Neil Maker yeah. an email because I think Neil will have to do a tree warden hearing like he did for that other one. Yeah. Sure. That's a good idea. I know that everybody's got blown down trees. Oh, but I looked out my bathroom window that today, thing falls on and there's there's it's one going clear. right. Like this. If it clear. fell on my house, it would pond road. Down. You, you go there, you'll see. Oh, you probably know. If there's notches out of it, yeah. a plow truck hits it yeah, all the right. time. Right. Yeah, so much but down if trees. Neil wants to note it as a hazard. Then he has to have a hearing. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd like to have make a motion that we go into this executive session to discuss personnel matters At for 1 BSA 313A3. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.